Augusta. Good morning and welcome to our service today. But as you can see, I am still uh, recording from Scotland and I would just like to say how grateful I am to my friend Grant Harrell for um, recording uh, these films. Um, today we have the lighthouse behind me and my sermon is all about spiritual powers of light and darkness and this lighthouse has protected sailors for many years from the perils of the rock so it seems appropriate to be here. I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moves us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice, unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus, you our Lord. And grant him, most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins, he pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us hearty rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with song. strength of the 
lesson is taken from St Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Finally then, find your strength in the Lord, in his mighty power. Put on all the armour which God provides, so that you may be able to stand firm against the devices of the devil. For our fight is not against human foes, but against cosmic powers, against the authorities and potentates of this dark world, against the superhuman forces of evil in the heavens. Therefore, take up God's armour. Then you will be able to stand your ground when things are at their worst, to complete every task and still to stand. Stand firm, I say. Buckle on the belt of truth, for coat of mail put on integrity, let the shoes on your feet be the gospel of peace to give you firm footing. And with all these, take up the great shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take salvation for a helmet, for sword, take that which the Spirit gives you, the words that come from God. Give yourselves wholly to prayer and entreaty. Pray on every occasion in the power of the Spirit. To this end, keep watch and persevere, always interceding for all God's people, and pray for me that I may be granted the right words when I open my mouth, and may boldly and freely make known to hidden purpose for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may speak it boldly as it is my duty to speak, here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. Psalm 84 Oh, how amiable are thy dwellings, thou Lord of hosts! My soul hath a desire and longing to enter into the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Yet the sparrow hath found her an house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. Even thy altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will always be praising thee. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are thy ways, who going through the veil of misery use it for a while, and the pools are filled with water. They will go from strength to strength, and unto the God of gods every appeareth every one of them in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold, O God, our defender, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For one day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of ungodliness. For the Lord God is a light and a fence. The Lord will give grace and worship, and no good thing shall he withhold from them that live a godly life. O Lord God of hosts, 
Blessed is the man that put his trust in thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 6, verses 56 to 69. My flesh is real food, my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells continually in me, and I dwell in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me shall live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, and it is not like the bread which our fathers ate. They are dead, but whoever eats this bread shall live forever. This was spoken in a synagogue when Jesus was teaching in Capernaum. Many of his disciples, on hearing it, exclaimed, This is more than we can stomach. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who art always more ready to hear than we to pray, and art wont to give more than either we desire or deserve, pour down upon us the abundance of thy mercy, 
forgiving us those things whereof our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way, and you her plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant her in health and wealth long to live, strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies, and finally after this life she may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Charles, Prince of Wales, Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, William, Duke of Cambridge, and Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, and all the royal family. Endue them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.
For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Last week we reflected on what and who the poor are and drew a distinction between spiritual poverty, which we're all meant to try and attain, that sense of being unbeholden to things of this world, and material poverty that enslaves so many of our fellow human beings, which means that they can expect to have a shorter lifespan than the wealthy without the benefits of education, healthcare, and the freedoms that we have in this country and that we have come to enjoy. Today we reflect on what are the cosmic powers and the spiritual forces of evil that St. Paul mentions. Let me read that bit again from Ephesians. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Well, St. Paul is not someone who is disinterested in material sin. He often goes to great lengths to refute drunkenness, idolatry, adultery, and so forth. But here we can see that the battle he is talking about fighting is, is not only with those material demons inside us, or the fractious relationships within a Christian community, or those who want to force Gentile Christians to become Jewish, or any other battle in which he enlists, but against the principalities and powers of those in high places. If we dig a bit deeper down into firstly what the principalities are and secondly what the spiritual wickedness in high places are, maybe that will help us to understand him a bit better. The word for principalities is the same word ache, which is used for political military or religious leaders. They are all ache. Arche means the first, the principal, the ruler, as do all the words which are in English which do use this root. For example, archaeology, the study of the first things, archaic, very old, archbishop, the principal bishop, arch enemy, the principal foe, arch, the way into something like a boulevard or a building. So this word means the primary or leader. And cosmocrator means ruler of this world. Krator is where the word autocrat or democrat comes from. It means rule, rule of one's own or rule of the people. Cosmocrator means ruler of the world. This signifies the evil one. He was considered to be the ruler of this world. You might think it rather pessimistic that the ruler of this world was considered to be evil. But you have to remember that the world, as with the flesh, are not what we mean by those terms. The world is to be juxtaposed with the kingdom of God. The flesh is juxtaposed with the spirit. All these terms are negative or positive aspects of the universe. The world means worldly in a negative sense, rather than what we might call earthy. And the kingdom of God is the godly part, or the part subject to the rule of Christ. A person can be ruled either by the world or by Christ. They thought that the evil one had limited power on earth, but they had to be fought against the ruler of the the world. He had been defeated by Christ, in the crucifixion and resurrection, but that we are enlisted in his eternal battle. Rather as if you were sitting in a bath and Jesus had pulled the plug out, you could either put your toe in the plug hole and try and stop the water from going out of the bath, which would be assisting the demonic powers of this world, or you could move your toe out of the way in order to assist the water to flow out. Forgive me for this rather banal analogy, but it's all I could think of to, to express what's going on. So for St. Paul, what he's saying is that we should take our toe out of the way and let the goodness of Christ flow through, in effect. 
So it's obviously a lot more positive than simply moving a toe. We are engaged in a war, a war that has been won, but the battle continues against the evil one. What are the weapons we need? St Paul tells us they are righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the word of God, and above all else, prayer. And in the second lesson for us today, John 6, Jesus says, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. We don't often, probably enough, focus upon Holy Communion as sustaining us in our spiritual life. We do not often enough focus upon Holy Communion as sustaining us in our spiritual life. Daniel Newman writes in Faith and Worship, while communion is a memorial meal, it is not just that. God also gives his son to be his, spiritual, his people's spiritual food and sustenance in the sacrament. As we eat the bread and wine in the Lord's Supper in faith, we feed on him. And that helps us in this battle against the demonic powers. Traditionally, it is a sacrament and scripture that nurture the Christian for the spiritual battle against the forces of evil in our world and in our heart. I have to say that there are a few greater means by which one can find sustenance and strength for that battle than through Holy Communion. Maybe it is the fact that you are physically being touched by the bread, which is the sacrament of Jesus himself, that is so powerful. Maybe it is that Jesus himself gave us this meal, if you remember. Or maybe it is that it is the family meal that you do with other Christians. Or maybe all three. But my memory floats to the many colourful and varied places that I've had the privilege to share in this sacred meal with a huge variety of individuals. And without a doubt, it has helped me in my spiritual battle against the forces of evil. St Paul says that our battle is not against certain people or clubs, but against the spiritual powers that so often try to rule the world and the heart but that power has been defeated by Christ. And we are just there to help the water flow out of the bath as quickly and easily as we can. Amen. Let us pray for God's blessing on us, on our families, for our friends, and all for whom we have prayed today. 
the peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen.